Welcome to the World Economic Forum's annual summit here in Davos. I have with me Dr. Fatih Birol of the IEA, a man who's in the midst of many political and economic conversations as the world battles an energy crisis that it has never seen before. Dr. Birol, thank you very much for your time. In fact, I'm going to open by quoting you. You said the world has never seen such an energy crisis. It's a new energy world with new realities. We are at a turning point for global energy. This is what you said in one of your previous interviews over the last two weeks. Explain to us what these turning points are and whether you see any light anytime soon at, this, at the end of this tunnel. Thank you. So I believe we are in the middle of the first global energy crisis. Uh, we have never seen something before. Uh, we know that in the 1970s, we had oil crisis yes. in 1973 then again 78, 79, but it was only oil. So we are seeing the crisis in the oil markets, crisis in the natural gas markets, and crisis in the coal markets, and as such, electricity markets are in a turmoil. The reason is very simple. Uh, Russia, uh, the country uh, that invaded Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, was until very recently number one oil exporter of the world number one natural gas exporter of the world, a major player in the coal markets. And uh, as a result of uh, Russia's uh, actions and the response to that, uh, we are losing substantial amount of uh, energy from the markets. And it will not be very easy to compensate that loss of energy from other sources. And as a result, we are seeing prices are high and uh, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I would tell you that we can fix this problem sometime very soon. What timeline do you think is realistic? I know it's impossible to predict the political outcomes yeah. of what's going on with yeah. regards to Russia's invasion of Ukraine or the response that NATO allies have made to it. But in terms of just the supply demand situation in the oil market, Dr. Birol, are, are you able to sort of see any timeline of prices easing? I think the first important uh, test the world uh, will go through will be this summer. Because uh, in summer, uh, it is the driving season in, in a big part of the world. And uh, as a result of that, we will see oil uh, to peak. And the, the additional production uh, that will come from United States, Canada, Brazil, will not be yet fully in the market until the end of the year. So uh, this uh, summer, we may see prices may uh, get an additional push, upward uh, uh, push, unless there is one issue here, is China. If China's economy remains uh, weak and Chinese uh, demand as it is now uh, very weak, it can help the markets not to be so tight. So we're already currently, as we speak, above $100, $110 a yeah. barrel. And you're suggesting that this increase in demand during the months of summer could potentially push prices even higher, sir. Even higher in the absence of, as I said, uh, if the Chinese economy uh, uh, recovers, then it will put the additional pressure upwards. Or, uh, as we all know, some of the key producers in the uh, Middle East may well, if they wish so, put additional barriers in the market. But as we read from the papers uh, now, as we hear, uh, we don't see a great appetite uh, from those countries to uh, support the markets. Dr. Burrell, that's the other confounding bit in this, the crisis that the world is facing on energy, and yet the OPEC is not pushing up production, though it could. Can world powers not prevail on this cartel to push up production because it has the ability to do so? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, the Indian minister, uh, Puri, made a very good uh, uh, remark in uh, one of the sessions we were in, he said that I, he doesn't understand why the major producers in OPEC are not uh, pumping more oil since they have the ability to do so. Uh, it is, uh, of course, the question needs to go to them uh, to answer to, to those producers. But I believe uh, they have the ability and the capacity to do so if they uh, uh, wish so. Uh, but what I am uh, afraid is the current prices and maybe even higher would push the uh, inflation in many countries uh, at uh, riskier uh, levels. And this may well lead in, in many countries, especially energy importing, developing countries, uh, big economic difficulties, 
and I wouldn't uh, rule out if the situation continues like that. High oil prices, high natural gas prices, high electricity prices, high food prices. Uh, the uh, some of the countries, if not globally, we may see the, some signs of uh, recession in the future. Dr. Barol, is there a price we should be aware of that could potentially act as a cap price? Like, could prices go up to 140, 150, as high as that? Uh, I really hope uh, not, because even the current prices are in the risky zone. Right. And, uh, I really hope that we don't see a higher prices. But as I said, there are some factors uh, may come in the picture that can push the prices uh, significantly higher. Well, it's a sobering thought that you're not fully ruling that out. Um, a quick, uh, you know, last point that I wanted to talk to you about, and that is you have expressed the concern of the focus shifting away from renewable energy at this point in time as countries grapple yeah. to make incremental uh, increases, you know, to yeah. uh, fossil fuel based yeah. supplies. Uh, how bad a hit do you think renewable might take in the, yeah. pro in the course of this? Renewables are going uh, very strongly in fact, uh, before uh, this crisis. And I hope uh, that in many countries they will go stronger. For example, in India, uh, it is really going from strength to strength. Uh, but uh, when I see globally, I see the risk of uh, governments uh, not uh, continuing to support the renewables as they were doing uh, before. And uh, our fight against climate change may uh, suffer uh, from that because we are still seeing the lots of uh, uh, indications for extreme weather events uh, from very hot uh, uh, temperatures uh, to floods around the world. I really hope uh, that this crisis, energy security concerns, while we have to take it as a priority, we shouldn't uh, uh, lose sight of another crisis, which is the climate crisis. Uh you have been an expert in this area for a long time now. Uh, what do you make of the weaponization of energy in this day and age? I think this is uh, really something which is uh, one of the uh, worst enemies of energy sector. And uh, as a result of what has just happened, I expect uh, that there will be reorientation of the international energy trade and the uh, Russia uh, proved once again not to be a, a reliable energy partner. This time for Europe, uh, and tomorrow it can be for another country. So uh, I am afraid that the international energy trade will suffer uh, from that as a result of actions of uh, Russia. And I am afraid uh, that the countries, when they in the future uh, have trade agreements, they will not only look at the price economic terms, they will look at whether or not their trade partner is a reliable one. And when you say reorientation, can you elaborate a little bit on that for us? Uh, for example, uh, I, you know, uh, uh, Russia was very important for uh, Europe. Yes, of course. But Europe was also very important for Russia. A big chunk of the Russia's energy was going to Europe, and the Europe was a very good lucrative uh, customer uh, for Russia. Since the Europe is closing door for energy trade uh, with Russia, Russia will have to uh, find new uh, customers. And at the same time, uh, the, uh, for example, Middle East oil uh, going from uh, uh, from uh, uh, Middle East countries to Asia may well now come to Europe to compensate the uh, Russian uh, oil and gas. So you see shifts in partnerships and agreements. Uh, uh, exactly. And again, I believe that uh, uh, now we are going to see more and more countries will look at the reliability of the partner, not only the, the uh, price of oil or gas. Dr. Birol, I know you have a very busy day here in Davos and a very busy week. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for speaking to me. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye.